Assalamualaikum Rahman Rahim. In this lecture, we are going to study the use of the vestigial sideband in broadcast television. The best band are the message signal of the TV occupies 4.5 megahertz band. So naturally, the double sideband cannot be used because the double sideband will require 9 megahertz, which is a huge number. So we cannot use the double sideband. The single side band can also not be used because the base band signal in TV transmission has sizable power at low frequency region and for that reason the one side band cannot be completely suppressed. Second reason that why cannot we use the single side band is because in designing the broadcast receiver we, use, we prefer the envelope detection because we want one costly transmitter and multiple cost effective receivers so that's why in case of the single sideband, uh, we prefer envelope detection over the synchronous detection. Synchronous detection requires costly receiver because in synchronous detection, same carrier signal of the same frequency needs to be generated as the transmitter side. So we prefer envelope detection over synchronous detection. But we saw that in the single sideband with carrier, the uh, single sideband with carrier signal has low power efficiency. So that's why we cannot also not use the envelope detection method in, in that case. So that's why the single sideband with carrier is also not preferred. Single sideband suppressed carrier cannot be used for the broadcast communication because we do not want to use the synchronous detection. We can also not use the single sideband with carrier because it has low frequency, it is low power efficiency. So the stigial sideband becomes a perfect candidate for television broadcast. Now this is the block diagram of the uh, television broadcast. This portion is my transmitter side and this portion is my receiver side. So if we have a message signal M of T that needs to be multiplied by 2 cosine omega CT. As a result I am going to generate this double sideband suppressed carrier signal. Now with the help of these two filters the HTF and the HRF I am going to generate the vestigial sideband. So the vestigial spectrum is controlled by two filters. The transmitting RF filter that is the HTF and the receiver RF filter that is the HRF. Jointly it can be written as we can write this as HIF is actually equal to the combination of both. The HIF I can write this HIF is the combination of HTF and HRF and this is actually my vestigial shaping filter. And then on the receiver side I have the adult filter which is called the H0 of F. And this H0 of F must follow the equation that we have previously written when we were studying the vestigial sideband. So this H0 of F must, fo must follow this equation which is 1 divided by Hi F plus Fc plus Hi F minus Fc. So this filter should be designed as such that its transfer function should be like this. Let me name it as equation 3. So with the help of this uh, vestigial shaping filter which is the HIF which is basically a combination of the transmitting filter and the receiving filter we are going to uh, get the vestigial sideband and then on the receiver side I am going to use the H0 of F and H0 transfer function should satisfy this equation. Now we can see it graphically for example this is my broadcast transmission this is my carrier frequency FC if I am using the double sideband then in this case if this is my FC I am going to have the FC minus 4.5 megahertz and the FC plus 4.5 megahertz because this case the bandwidth of the message signal is 4.5 megahertz. Bandwidth of the message are the baseband signal. So this will be FC minus B and this will be FC plus B. So as a result total bandwidth for this will be 9 megahertz. I also have a radio spectrum certain frequencies allotted to the audio uh, spectrum over here. But now for this video transmission, this broadcast transmission, I needed 9 MHz, which is a huge number. Instead, I can use the vestigial sideband. If I use the vestigial sideband, what these filters, HTF, HRF, combinedly will do that it will convert this double sideband into a vestigial sideband. This HIF is the vestigial shaping filter, so it will convert the double sideband into this vestigial sideband. So this is my vestigial shaping filter, which, con which co contains the combination of these two filters. As a result, if we can have a look, the right side, the right band has been fully transmitted. This band has been fully transmitted, whereas part of this band, this left side band has been transmitted. So as a result, we are going to have FC minus 
minus 1.25 megahertz over here and this will be fc plus 4.5 megahertz as a result total bandwidth required for this transmission will be 6 megahertz for the double side band we required 9 megahertz for the single side band we are going to require the 4.5 megahertz but now we require the 6 megahertz which is a which is in between value between the single side band and the double side band so the vestigial shaping filter this hif cuts off the lower side band spectrum gradually starting from 0 0.75 megahertz this is going to start from 0 0.75 megahertz to the 1.25 megahertz below the carrier frequency fc as shown so with the help of this vestigial shaping filter hif and with the help of this h naught filter we are going to get the desired vestigial sideband for the broadcast communication for the broadcast tv transmission thank you